A quienes dejaron su tierra Les dedico esta canción Les dedico esta canción A quienes dejaron su tierra I was born in 1934. Well, at that time, uh, my parents lived in Long Beach, California. My father had been a police officer, and my mother had worked in a beauty shop as a hairdresser. You served in the Coast Guard? Yes. Of what years? I served in the Coast Guard 1953 to 1957. I started out uh, in uh, a uh, little island there called Government Island is where they train the recruits. They said that I could go to any school for uh, non-officers uh, uh, that was available. And I chose, because my father was dying of cancer, uh, I decided I might want to become a doctor, so I went to Hospital Corman School. When I um, got out of the Coast Guard, um, I went to California State University in Long Beach and I tried to get into uh, school there and they told me that I did not uh, meet their standards. And I went in to find out why and I found out that when I left the University of Arizona in my second year, I left without dropping courses. So I talked to the president at uh, Cal State Long Beach and uh, he said, well, haven't you, have you taken any other courses? And I said, oh wait, I went to Long Beach City College and I took 30 units there. So they admitted me after I had my transcripts transferred to Cal State. And I think that was the first thing that not only made me have a better understanding of higher education, but especially of community colleges and how important they are. And then, uh, towards the end of my three years at Cal State Long Beach, I majored really in two subjects, political science and public administration. After I graduated from Long Beach State, I went to work in Garden Grove. I decided uh, uh, to see uh, if there was an appointment there. And it so happened they were hiring a personnel director in Garden Grove. It's a brand new city. And uh, yeah, they appointed me as an assistant to the city manager, I should say, which is not the assistant city manager. And I worked for uh, Garden Grove for three years, moved up to an assistant city um, manager and also personnel director. And I worked with the city attorney, and I thought, this sounds like fun. So I left Garden Grove in 1963 and went to UCLA School of Law. When I graduated from um, law school at UCLA in 1966, I put in for a, a job at uh, the city of Santa Ana and uh, to work as a law clerk because I had to pass the bar before I could go to work as an attorney. And I got hired by the city attorney in, in uh, Santa Ana. Carl Thorne's one of my uh, mentors in uh, Santa Ana government and uh, there are other mentors there too but Carl Thornton he was great to work with because he had the data and you could trust him I just trusted him from day one I liked him I also liked uh, on the City Council Lauren Grisette who became uh, probably a, a good friend over time and there was another councilman uh, first name Walter I can't. Brooks. Brooks, Walter Brooks, thank you. And Walter uh, and I got along very well. It was 1969, the mayor of the city, he uh, decided not to run again. So I said, well, would you mind if I ran because I live in your ward? And he said, no, that's fine, anybody can run, you know. And once I got elected to the city council, he says, there's two things that I think Santa Ana needs, and I hope you'll continue them. One is more places to play tennis, and the, and the other is a new courthouse. And I said, I'm right with you on both of those. <laughs> That's uh, 1969, the elections were in April. This was under the charter. 
and the mayor was elected or selected by the council. So it was a different uh, system then. Something happened in 1968 or 69. We had a police officer, a white police officer, killed by a black, yeah, Sasser. And uh, it put the whole uh, city in um, a state of alert, if you will. And Lauren Grisette, uh, who was just a fine man, the two of us walked, uh, went down there. I met a lot of African Americans in Orange County that I still know today. And, uh, and so that pushed me in the direction that I hadn't really intended, which was to create a human relations commission. And we did that. Apart from this was uh, uh, things like low-income housing. So we started working on that and we created a Santa Ana Housing uh, Commission or Authority. Besides those two, I saw as a need for redevelopment. As a practicing attorney, I uh, practiced more law in churches because the courthouse was the old Santa Ana courthouse. It had what, six, six courtrooms or something, not very many. But we, we started, on, I think, on the right foot and, uh, and got the uh, Redevelopment Commission going and we got some low-income housing going and, and so that uh, we were doing good things. You were mayor from 1973 to 1975. Yes, and that we were still um, appointed by the council or elected by the council. So you had to get four votes from the seven council members in order to become mayor. And so during my first four years of uh, trying to solve some of the problems we had, and Lauren Rosette was always a supporter, Walter Brooks was a supporter, they were good guys. Ray, uh, Ray was um, uh, a fighter, he was uh, uh, loud, and he was uh, going after what he wanted and believed in. And I loved him for that. Ray was just a neat guy. I think the, the, the most memorable was, uh, and I may have told this a few times, uh, when the city uh, got uh, the first 100-foot ladder truck in Orange County, city of Santa Ana. And I said, well, bring it on down to the council meeting. This is really neat. We had a press release out that we were going to have uh, the new uh, fire truck that was a ladder truck. It went up uh, 100 feet, and you could sh shoot water on tall buildings rescue people from seven stories. And it, there weren't many uh, buildings higher than seven stories. Um, so anyway, it was, he brought it there and I declared a recess. We went all out there and it was really nice. And being a little foolish and adventuresome, I climbed up and got on it. I stood on the ladder and they belted me in and I said, you know, I'd like to take a ride up there. And so to make the longer story shorter. Uh, I wound up getting up to 85 feet, but I didn't know it. All I knew is my hands were sweating and uh, they were slippery on that aluminum. And you're on a ladder that even with a slight breeze goes back and forth. But I got up to 85 feet and I yelled down, how far to go? And what I heard was 50 feet. And I said, oh, shoot, or something like that. And then I hear a lot of laughing downstairs. Everybody's laughing. And I, you know, I thought I said that real quiet. But I said it real, and then I noticed that the reason I could hear them so well was they had a microphone to me. But the same microphone went to them. So they were hearing all my scared things. And I thought, oh, boy. So I said, I think this is enough. Anyway, they took me down and I got down there and I said, I only went up 50 feet? And they said, no, 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 you went up 85. I said, well, I thought you said 50. And they said, what, 15? We said, how much further? 15 feet. So I've always wanted to go the last 15, but not anymore. <laughs> I was a, a member of the bar, the Orange County Bar, and uh, so I kind of had an interest in it. I mean, that was quite a, a process. If you imagine you're in Congress, you're one person from one area, and you want to get a very expensive building, which is a 
federal courthouse. They're very expensive. I worked at all levels. What you need to do is have a place of holding in Santa Ana. And then you need to somehow come up with a temporary courthouse in Santa Ana. And then you go for design of a courthouse in Santa Ana. And then you get the appropriation for the money to build the designed program. So that process <laughs> took 20 years, took the 10 years I was there and beyond. And, and what, what happened though was you build each time and I, and I, got, I got the place of holding bill passed. Uh, got uh, support on the Senate side from both of our senators. And the good news was California had a Democrat and a Republican. They both signed off on it, so the Senate whisked it through. Uh, in the House, I got the support of the Judiciary Committee. And so it went to the president, then lobbying the president, and it was Jimmy Carter. And I had a friend there and Jimmy Carter. And so we got uh, the bill uh, approved in Jimmy Carter's time in terms of a place of holding. Then the next thing, I went to Santa Ana. Have you got any land you can give us? So the city, when I said that, said, we'll find a piece. And uh, went to GSA and I had support from members of the house, but it turned out GSA had the authority to spend up to 600000 without even having to get a law passed. All I had to do was get certain language in, a, in one of their bills. And we did that. And the next thing is GSA came out and, uh, and said, uh, okay, the site was perfect for them. Anyway, um, so these were all incremental things. I have to say this, it made zero progress in Ronald Reagan's eight years zero. It got no funding, no money, no planning, no design, nothing happened. We got the design done under the Bush administration. And so I thought, well, that's great. Now it's kind of bipartisan, place of holding by the Democrats, and we got that. And, and that went forward. And then we got Bill Clinton, 92, for eight years. And in the Clinton administration, <laughs> We got the entire funding, the 90% of all the money spent, 90% was funded in the eight years of the, of the Clinton administration. So anyway, the, the, the funding came then, and then the building and construction kind of followed, and it was dedicated, what, 90-something? So it, it, took a, it took a while, and there were setbacks, but it sold and it passed, and, uh, and that's what it is. Well, Reagan Courthouse, and, it, uh, and I'm still proud of it <laughs> uh, as, a, as something that we needed and that helped the city. Yep. What do you makes a good politician? Well, uh, at the highest level, uh, and, and that's usually where I start, I try to go uh, honesty, integrity, and courage. So those are the three things. But I, bringing it down a step, um, I should start with willingness to listen to other people. Listen, 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 listen. You learn a lot by listening. So you listen to people, you compromise with them. You say, well, you need this for that. So compromise um, uh, after listening. And I think uh, being somewhat humble about not trying to say you you, you, you know, just being more relaxed about others when uh, when things happen, you know, when things happen and, and people take credit for it. It's not who gets the credit, it's who made it happen in their own mind, at least. So that's kind of, to me, the good politician. <laughs>